All right, we are currently rolling. Please go ahead. All right. So uh, starting at the top with Vineyard, and I think this was the one where we just wanted to check whether they truly believed that CNCF was the best home for them. Uh, Harry, did you have a, any conversation with them about that? Yeah, so I have reached out to the team and uh, they also have another presentation uh, with the Seek Storage. I think they already got some feedback uh, from Seek Storage. So my personal view is that this project uh, has an independent um, reason and field but it's actually aligned with the uh, cloud native uh, ecosystem very well, just like uh, the Kubi flow, like the other AI infrastructure. So it's uh, complementary to the existing tool state. And uh, I also think um, the feedback from the six storage is same with me and Will, uh, since uh, they also uh, view this project as a complementary to this current CNCF landscape. So I think it, it's, it's actually has a good alignment with our reason. Um, yeah, I'd like to have other feedback. If I don't, I don't know, no, I'm, I'm not sure if it's six star region folks is here. I maybe can have more input on that. Maybe Saad or Aaron have any thoughts about six storages opinion on this? Sorry, what was the project? Vineyard. Uh, I unfortunately don't have any context on that one. Aaron, do you? Aaron might have stepped away for a bit. So um, maybe we revisit this one? OK, yeah, we can come back. Fine. So uh, the next one, don't let us forget that one. <laughs> the next one was SSV. Oh, and I, I think SSVM, we were slightly worried about the name. And then it, it, we have put in the new name as well. And I dropped that one into email. Um, right. Just bring it out over here. They, they would like to be able to change towards uh, Wasm Edge Time. Say that again. Sorry, I didn't hear. Here. Wasm? There you go. Wasm Edge Runtime. Wasm Edge Runtime. I've put it in the okay. chat. Ah, um, I beg your pardon. Aaron is now available. We can move back to Vineyard. Bouncing back and forth this morning. <laughs> Sorry, I had to. I've been continuous meetings and lots of coffee, so we know what that means. I'm in the bathroom. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> uh, question is vineyard. Um, All right, let's jump back to vineyard. Yeah, we we heard that they've uh, presented to Six Storage and and wondered if that. Uh, I mean, yeah, it's. I don't. Our initial thoughts, both Alex and I, felt like it was more something that would be under kind of the umbrella of like an Apache project or like analytics, there isn't really a good um, pillar within Kubernetes that is, you know, very data centric and big data related. Um, but I don't know, it'd be interesting to see, I guess, where it goes from, um, cause it's just sandbox, right? If it can get traction and evolve into something else, it is, it does run in cube. It's, it's, utilizes a lot of the functions, it's different. I mean, that's, I think has it going for it. It's not yet another project of the same flavor. Um, we just don't really seem to have a very data centric SIG, I would say in Cube yet today. Yeah, but I, I don't see why we shouldn't have going forward. And I mean, maybe we do need to have a, a working group on uh, um, or something or a SIG. I mean, I, I think there was another project as well in that space as well that we come and join. Yeah, and, well. and I but, agree. I, 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 I truly believe like that's the next evolution of Kubernetes is, you know, data governance, data security, um, where it came from, how it's being managed, how it's being archived and all that done automatically. I think there could be a whole new flavor of projects. It just, where does that belong today? Does it belong in storage or does, like you said, is there another working group that maybe should be more focused on that? Cornelia, did you want to ask something to add? No. Nope. Yeah, I mean, this project is not a very storagey project, given it's about not not storing things. It's about serialization. Right. It fits more with gRPC in a sense, although not really either. But 
Um, yeah, I wonder whether we should have some kind of machine learning kind of SIG or something. I, I it, think it would be a good idea to yeah. Yeah. start. Yeah, I, I also mentioned that before that we are missing a machine learning working group, but this is actually a very important actually um, field in the clone native ecosystem. Uh, we know that we missed the Kubi flow somehow, it's fine, but I think there will be more project coming. Uh, I also talked with SIG around time folks, uh, they are talking with data breaks. I think they are also have some candidate project there, uh, including of course, the Vanyard and more. Um, I will say we should have something like a machine learning working group to handle this project in the future. Yeah, Dave's uh, put in chat, uh, we didn't hear you. <laughs> I'm gonna <laughs> guess you're on mute or something. Um, uh, the data and AI foundation. I, I mean, I think it's fine for us to overlap with them, uh, you know, in the same way that we have some overlap with the CDF. <laughs> yeah, um, it's the same issue. Yeah, but it, I don't think as we should, you know, stop doing uh, right things and just because they're the overlapping, just like CDF thing animation. We have a lot of GDOPS project in CNCF. We have CGAP delivery. But you know there are overlaps with CDF, but we still need to do the right thing. I, this, that's my opinion. I don't know if Corinna has an idea of that. I'm I'm going to say actually, a conversation with Harry did kind of slightly focus my mind a bit on the fact that a lot of machine learning is being done. You know, all the model training is being done in the cloud. You know, it's like an ideal application for using cloud resources to deal with these giant amounts of data for a short period of time. So it seems like a very natural cloud native application. So yeah, I would, I would lean towards saying we should have a, a SIG to kind of, or probably a SIG to look in that area. So we start with this project and then see if the leads here can form the SIG. Is that what you're thinking, Liz? There might be other people in the community as well. Yeah. Um, is, is that a first project in the sandbox uh, of this kind? Do we have anything that belongs to the similar space? I think there might be. Yeah, Great I think question. we might have something else. I think else. we might have something. Um, and I think yeah. there's another one. In, is there another one in this spreadsheet as well? I'm, I'm looking that? at Pravega, Justin, I remember you, you did that due diligence. Oh, yes, Pravega is, yeah, Pravega is a little bit it's not it's a little bit so yeah there's some overlap it's a, yeah it's a spark ish thing so it's in that it's in that kind of space yeah yeah maybe it would be nice to do the yeah analysis of all the sandbox projects that we have to see what belongs in the space but yeah i don't think we should stop uh vineyard from from applying just because it overlaps with other foundations all right should we do votes for vineyard Okay, and uh, moving back again to the project formerly known as SSVM, which is now Wasm Edge Runtime. That is a mouthful. <laughs> is it going to just end up being called Wasm Edge? Uh, or were? Or, yeah, were. W13E. Okay. Wet. <laughs> I mean, I, I guess we can't really comment too much on the aesthetics of the name. <laughs> Um, any, I mean, we did talk about this last time, if I recall, and I think it was really that kind of separation of the project from its parent company that we were concerned about and the name being a very key, you know, element of that. So Chris, when you spoke to them about it, did, did that kind of highlight any they, they were open to the change. They, they get it. Uh, they understand the kind of concern of trademarks and overlap between company name, project name, and product. So they, they were cool. They, they were reasonable to work with. It doesn't really have that many dependencies too. So it's fairly, fairly lightweight. 
Any other comments or concerns before we start on a vote? No concern. Should I vote like for W13E like e smiley face? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's fine. <laughs> Okay, moving on to Chaos Blade next. I think we need a SIG Alibaba. <laughs> Alibaba have been super <laughs> active, yeah. Well, well, I was wondering if we need a SIG Chaos in Sam, because Sandbox yeah. already has like three, three. Is that, and yeah, there's yeah. three more here. So I think we'll have six Chaos Sandbox projects. I we did say it was uh, going to be a, an area of uh, yeah. you know, a so, high profile I, area. I, I actually reached out to the Chaos Blade team at Will. Uh, it's not my team, of course, it's another team. But I think the interesting part is Chaos Blade is a new thing uh, because it is trying to create a control plan for a Chaos tools. So if you look at, at their presentation, they have integration with the existing Chaos Mesh and uh, Litmus project. So they, they are building a control plan for all of these. Chaos, 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 chaos blading, uh, chaos tools. They have dashboards so you can see what happened in your chaos system. I think that is a new idea, actually. Uh, of course, they have they also have their own chaos tool and they all there is overlap with the existing port, but I see they are doing some added value in the chaos engineering part. That's why also I agree that we should have some kind of working group for that maybe in the future. Uh, this will be a very interesting field. More project will come. Mm. Yeah, I think it currently sort of sits under runtime, but yeah. SIG testing, there's an idea. We've got to start calling it tags. From next week, they're tags. <laughs> testing, testing, maybe testing and conformance, something that would hold the uh, test uh, frameworks and conformance frameworks under its umbrella. Maybe, um, Amy, you could put on the um, TOC like agenda working document that we should talk about new SIGs. Because it seems yeah. like tags, um, new tags, new tags, new tags. Oh my God. <laughs> I think that's fine. Um, simply because it's been one of those things that we have talked about as something that should be rising and hasn't. But focus. We only have a few minutes in here. Right. <laughs> All right. Votes for Chaos Blade. The next one on the list is yet another reverse proxy. I think this is the is first dot, dot net project to submit to the CNCF. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> and I had to actually go and look up the fact that apparently dot net is in a foundation and yeah. it's a large community, surprisingly. I didn't, uh, just looking at it now, do we think it's a sufficiently diverse community? Not kind of entirely. It's 48 contributors. I don't know if they're, where they will come from. Any comments or, they don't actually have, I can't see in the, Am I looking in the wrong place? But I can't see in their um, repo. I can't see like an owners or a maintainers. Has anybody seen anything like that? Um, um, just a kind of question, is it, it's not entirely obvious from the, the 
description. I don't know whether they've written in the doc whether it's whether we you would count it as cloud native. I mean, it's no. just says it's a reverse proxy, which is. They're just working on uh, on on their Kubernetes ingress controller, I believe. But then, um, I don't quite understand like what would be their differentiator uh, from from other uh, ingress controllers in the space. Uh, based on the based on the YouTube yeah, presentation, apart from being like something like that. Yeah. The other one was in the readme itself, it says we expect ER to ship as a library and a project template. So basically the idea is other people would include the, in their applications, I guess. Yeah, that, that is uh, that is what present, I, I watched their YouTube presentation, something that you include as a library directly to a C-sharp code. code. Um, and there you can see like how it's useful for C-sharp projects, but once it becomes like a Kubernetes microservice, I don't quite understand like what makes them um, unique and different from, from other ingress controllers. Hmm. Okay, Chris saying they'd also have to change the license from MIT to Apache, yeah. but I imagine that's not a huge... No, there's a Microsoft CLA, so it'll be very, fairly easy for them to do so. Yeah, supplied as a library. How many people have .NET experience here? I think this is the thing. I mean, if you look at their why do they want to contribute for their point C is we think Yarp shows .NET as a capable platform for building cloud native apps and infrastructure to run on both Windows and Linux. And they want to get more exposure to a wider ecosystem of customers and contributors beyond the .NET ecosystem. I sort of feel like I, I would, this is the first time I've really heard of like the .NET ecosystem wanting to, yeah, it, it just feels like a very separate community to me. I don't, but they do have a very large ecosystem around .NET. I personally think if we should consider half something from the donut ecosystem, it's super large and it's growing very fast. And it's more like an alternative world we barely have any connection with. It's, it, it, if you have something from that community, it may actually maybe bring us with some even more project in that field. And that is my personal consideration, but I'm not sure what is this project. I'm not sure of the position of this project in the donut ecosystem. Maybe it's just a small tool or it's already a, you know, a widely adopted technology. I'm not sure about that because I'm not expert in this field at all. But uh, I personally think that donate community is something that we want to keep eye on and uh, have some connection with them. Yeah, I don't, I don't sort of feel anti .NET per se. It just feels I don't know whether whether this is a good fit with CNCF or whether that should be a. You know, is it is it basically just a .NET library that should be part of some bigger ecosystem of .NET libraries? Right, right. We need, we need to look at what is this project really trying to solve. I mean, I think that yeah. I mean, a reverse proxy is great, but I'm not sure I would count it as cloud native. I think they have they seem to have aspirations to have closer ties with Kubernetes, but they are currently all aspirational rather than real that's my concern is that that it's i mean like i i'm not sure that like nginx per se is a cloud native project even though it's used in quite a lot of environments for the same you know as a reverse proxy it's like um, yeah it's not it's not by itself got the characteristics like it's not not to say it's not useful in the context, but it's not a kind of doesn't seem fundamentally cloud native with, without doing something else like Envoy has done and become it and had the kind of 
Dragon so model and everything. Just so? Yeah. Do we have uh, any other projects that are libraries? Yes, I'd say we, I mean, or primarily libraries, I guess. Like distribution is primarily a library, although you can run it as an application. Um, and I'm sure there are others that are primarily libraries. Although I feel like with distribution that, you know, it's it's a giant piece of fundamental cloud native kind of, you, you got to have a yeah. registry. Yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. But yeah. but it's, it is kind of it is, is architected to be used as a library. All right. Do we want to vote on this one? Do we want to suggest that they go back to .NET Foundation? Do we want to? What what information would you need from them to make a decision? I guess is one way to. Think about right. it. And also, we need some information about what is this project, uh, how this project allowed with the same safe uh, region. And uh, that is a common question I have because, of course, I, I think I don't have enough experience to look into the project deeply. <laughs> so, I think to have some input or feedback from their folks will be really helpful. So, should we send them to SIG Network? Yep. Seems reasonable. Okay. And what we're saying, we're we're asking Sig Network for their opinion on whether this is a specifically cloud native solution and whether it's offering something that our existing kind of proxy projects don't already offer above and beyond being .NET. Yeah, I mean, what I like to know is how it relates, you know, differs, differentiates with Envoy, HA Proxy, Nginx. That's which is, uh, those are the similar projects. Just, just at least have some besides the fact that it, it's written in C sharp. Yeah, I'm sure yeah. they, they. I mean, given it's so modern, I'm sure they've incorporated some, some, some nice design decisions. I think it would be good to know that. Yeah. All right, moving on to Cube Invaders. A uh, question from Amy, presentation to SIG Network to review, is this cloud native and how is this different from existing CNCF projects? Yes, I think that sounds good. Okay, perfect, we can move on. Cube Invaders, which I think is basically written by one person. Uh, it does look like one person. I like how they, they answered the question of why do you want to come to the CNCF? I think it's a great community and I'd like to be part of it. <laughs> that is actually a good reason as, as long as they can add some value to the existing landscape, I believe. <laughs> yep. Yeah. It's something fun. It's fun. Is it going to, I mean, is it a serious, I kind of like it in a way, you know, I love it as a kind of demo or something, you know, that's the, who doesn't like having space invaders in a, in a project, but is it, I guess two, two things, uh, is this going to be a seriously useful contribution to the cloud native community? And the second thing is, uh, is this potentially opening the floodgates to a absolute boatload of kind of demo fun projects that I'd, I'd also kind of I mean we, we we turned down a bunch of projects of this kind of maturity and number of contributors last time because they were just too young it's, it's not had a lot of contributions and I'd say that from our experience with docker we we had things that were fun projects like the docker minecraft thing that um were great fun and great demos, but they didn't attract contributors in the long term because it's not clear what you can do so much for a fun project, like an, what the kind of scope of what it should be is um, compared to a, a, use, a more useful project. Um, so I, I kind of feel a little bit concerned about how many contributors it would actually attract given it doesn't have any 
um, kind of non-trivial number of commit people contributing now? All the commits are done like directly to master, not through the PRs. So it's like, yeah, just one person pushing code to master. Um, and it would also uh, be nice to, to kind of like uh, see how they differentiate themselves uh, from uh, other KS projects in, in the sandbox. Like what, what extra do they add? Um, they add that space invaders. <laughs> <and> they, add. <laughs> they add a cool name. They add more to the KS, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do, do we need to vote on this one or are we going to say thank you, but we... I hate voting no on things. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a policy of like no demo software. <laughs> Simple. It did, yeah. it did trigger looking for other ones. Like there's one called Wakapod as well. There's a couple of other fun projects like this. Yeah. Yeah, I think fun though they are and much though we love them. Love to, you know, I, th I think actually pulling them into the into the CNCF is not the right, not the yeah. right decision. Sick yeah, fun, it, tag yeah, fun. Yeah, <laughs> no, Kubernetes, I was asking DIMS, there's no place for like demo projects in, in Kubernetes. I guess that was the incubator. There's just a much, bunch of random stuff there for a while and that's been killed off, All right? Okay, and the next yeah, one is. Fun anymore, Chris. <laughs> okay, got it. <laughs> All right, should we move on to Q plus? I think I had a comment on this one as well. I think this is just one developer as well. If I recall it, yeah, it's, I mean, it does have 295 stars, which is something, but it's a very, very small set of contributors. Yeah, and I, I mean, given what it's trying to do, I think you'd kind of expect some contributors who were kind of uh, software vendors and things to, at this mm. point, and I mean, I think at the point when we want to, we'd be interested in it, it would be because there were people actually using it um, to ship applications, which is not clear that there are at the moment. Agreed. And it's been, I think it looks like it was started a couple of years ago, so it's had quite a lot of time to, to pull. Yeah, I, I feel like maybe it just doesn't quite meet the uh, community interest bar. Anyone want to comment further or should we move on? All right, so the next one is service mesh performance and there's also meshery. And I feel like maybe we should talk about both of those at the same time because um, they're both kind of, well, service mesh performance is figuring out how to test service mesh performances and it's coming out of the SIG network service mesh working group. Meshery is a conformance testing tool. Um, I believe that the SMI project has just, I mean, it's, it's all kind of tied up with Lee, Calcoat and, you know, the, his, the roles that he's playing in these different uh, groups, but I think Meshery is now adopted by SMI as the conformance testing tool. I am all for conformance testing tools that kind of establish whether or not something is, you know, like the way that Kubernetes has Kubernetes conformance tests, and then we know that a distribution of Kubernetes is really Kubernetes. This seems like a really good thing. But I just want, when we were talking to, um, so Dave and I had a SIG network liaison meeting with Lee earlier today. I feel like there's scope for getting alignment between the SMI, this SMP and meshery 
so that we can say, you know, as the CNCF, this is kind of how we go about understanding whether something is a service mesh or, or what capabilities the service mesh has and what performance characteristics it has. Um, so I sort of feel like this, when we might want to accept or reject these projects separately, but I think there is also a kind of bigger consideration of whether we want to try and get these three projects to align a bit more. I mean, yes, yeah. The SMP itself is a specification uh, and the meshery is an implementation of the specification uh, the way I read it before. Meshery is, an, is a test framework as I understand it to test whether or not a service mesh meets that SMI specification. And what it tests is basically what is in the spec, which is SMI. Mm. It says here it's both the canonical implementation of SMP and a conformance tool for SMI. Which... Yeah. yeah, I got the impression that meshery is kind of more than, it's, it's like a combination of all of that. It's, it almost wants to be like a control plane for, for service meshes. So it's like a control plane for your control plane. It like lets you deploy multiple ones and do these tests and measure their performance and all of that. Uh, my question is, um, we take measuring and not take uh, the spec. Like, I mean, do they go together or do we need to do both at the same time? I think that's part of the question, isn't it? Is like, well, it, are these things truly independent? I, I mean, we yeah. do have uh, precedent for things like notary and tough, you know, notary being the implementation of tough and they were treated separately. But this feels slightly different to me because it isn't the, but, like we were just saying, it isn't the implementation of the interface. It's the way you conformance test the interface. So yeah. but it also is the canonical implementation for SMP, which generally we've put a canonical implementation with the spec project. So TUF has a canonical reference implementation and um, some of the other ones do, I think. So I would have thought that from that point of view, Meshery and SM should be with SMP, but then when it's also the conformance tool for SMI, I think it should be with SMI. So I would tend to think that all three, uh, that we should ask SMI if they would want to adopt Meshery and or SMP first. Yeah, I think I lean to the same conclusion. I mean, I don't have any doubt that they're, you know, cloud native projects and they should somehow be inside the CNCF, but I'm not sure they, they, I'm not sure it makes sense for them to be three separate things. Yeah, I think they should be two or one things probably. I would tend to lean towards one. Mm. I, I, at the very least, I think we need sign off from the existing SMI folks that they like this idea yeah. and they want to like welcome this group uh, to what they are doing together, right? Um, yeah. Otherwise, and I think there's uh, quite a lot of overlap between them, and and you know there there is a blog post from Lee on the SMI blog post talking about meshery. So yeah, but he's wearing multiple hats, right? Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, but I'd like to kind of see it all aligned a yeah. bit, you know, and a bit clearer. So I don't know whether that means we need to take a vote or whether we just say, please work to try and turn these all into one thing, ideally under SMI. Well, I think we should, yeah, we should ask if that makes sense or a, another alignment of them as, as one, these two as one project or something. I mean, I think we should definitely get an opinion from SMI and a kind of set of options that we could pick from or yeah makes sense the other I just way realized to i'm the supposed thing. to be on a, on another thing um so if i drop off ah there are several we'll still have quorum and it's fine yes um okay i will i'm going to mute myself i'm going to drop in quickly what i think my votes would be for the other things if that makes sense or to, actually, is there anything I was worried about? We have actually no. Just go go ahead without Pixie. me. Uh, All right, Pixie's awesome. 
if, well, consider uh, if that they genuinely one. want to donate it it's awesome oh no i do have a there was some there's some issue about a dependency in pixie yes no i know for pixie it is not clear to me whether this is just the client parts and whether they're also so it's essentially um you know observability using ebpf to collect metrics and observability data which is awesome but it's not clear to me whether this is just the client stuff and it's dependent on a server um you know component that may not be included that wasn't clear to me okay did that make sense <laughs> did they make presentation to six um and if not shall we ask them to would it help us to understand the project better? Yeah, SIG observability. Yeah. yeah. From my perspective, yeah. That would be a good idea, actually. Because it's pretty cool, but it would be interesting to understand how it how the components really fit. All right. I really, really need to drop off. Sorry. Take care, everyone. <laughs> All right, I am marking Pixie as the uh, presentation requested, so we can move back to Fluid. Um, floor is open on Fluid. Yeah, this was the other big data one. So, um, it's an academia project as well, and it seems to be pretty active. Uh, a lot of contributors. Uh, yeah, it has a lot of a lot of contributors. Yeah, it's definitely a collaboration too, Alina. Uh, I remember talking to the person who submitted this uh, proposal. I know him from IBM days, um, and it, it looks like they they are doing it because they are facing some issues, uh, and they came up with the solution to so. Uh, there are other end users with similar requirements for this yeah. sort of abstraction. Uh, the one thing that I couldn't figure out here was like, which SIG would it fall under, like we were talking before. Other than that, uh, I'm a plus one for this. Would the, this idea of uh, machine learning one cover also like data analytics? Um, yeah, I think so. I think we just want to. Because then, then okay. this would be a good fit. Yeah. If, if there was one question I had here, it would be like, uh, they're using Aluxio, uh, which is not really CNCF. So if they, uh, they, if they need Aluxio and can't be replaced, um, you know, how much of it? If Alexia changes license and <laughs> what happens to us, right? <laughs> That's the thing that I can think of right now, given all the AGPL stuff going on. The risk for a lot of projects. So I wouldn't hold it against them. No. We've already got the issue with Grafana. I can see Chris smiling. He enjoys this thing. <laughs> No, I spoke with them this morning. It was lovely. Call for a vote on this then? Yeah. All right, our next one is Submariner. Oh, it's a rancher project or I'm confusing it with something else. It's a very big flashback yesterday uh, when I looked at it. I don't yeah. know where it's. 
it was. I think now we have more Red Hat, much more Red Hat folks uh, working. Yeah, got it, it, it did. I'm I first started it. in Rancher, um, and then it kind of evolved. Okay, cool. So, so the good thing is we have a community. That's good. <laughs> yeah, it seems pretty active. And I like the fact that uh, there is a good interaction with the Kubernetes uh, SIG multi-cluster, so I'm happy with that. I agree. I think they've been very good about taking in kind of requirements and driving it from that perspective to, to support multi-clusters so, and not just networking per se. All for a vote then. All right, the vote is open. And our very last one is Anthrea. I think I'm saying it right. Did we close on Pixie? Liz wanted more detail, okay. so we should just say we do a presentation. Yeah, yeah presentation to observe. observability was the request, yep. so moving on. And what they're contributing, yep. Uh, Andrea is from my employer, VMware. Thank you for the pronunciation correction. Appreciated. How is it pronounced? I didn't hear the right one. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> That's <laughs> all. Come on, Dims, you have all the answers. <laughs> Andrea. <laughs> it's an open vSwitch thing. Okay. Yep. I think our next internal project should be a naming thing that just random generator of project names. <laughs> They have a Slack channel on the Kubernetes Slack, and they seem to be recruiting folks to do like uh, Microsoft -y Windows stuff as well. Um, and they are looking at like telco use cases and things too. I mean, it's been around for a few years since 2019. Yeah. Seems to have got a lot of contributors over time. The thing I like about this project is the leads are like <laughs> deep into this. They don't have, they are not open source background like, you know, some of us, but they really want to do the right thing. And like, it's really good to see somebody uh, who is putting in effort by like looking at other projects, what they do and trying to adopt it and things like that. The only question I would have is like, how many of CI projects will we end up with, right? Um, but given that some of the projects are uh, not doing so well, mm -hmm. that would be the thing to look at here.
Yeah, I see this as mostly supporting a lot of telcos, essentially, that really <clears throat> use an open vSwitch as kind of primary use case. So helping them adopt cloud native technology. Yeah, I think it's good. It's uh, you know, it's kind of a little bit like the Kube OVM project, which I think we also uh, mm -hmm. uh, admitted into Sandbox. I, yeah, I like definitely yeah. like to see more experimentation around, you know, low level networking for Kubernetes. There, there hasn't been a whole lot of projects in that area, say even compared with storage. So that's that's kind of good to see. We're actually going to have a whole bunch more. <laughs> Kubernetes networking project projects than a while ago, fairly soon. Mm -hmm. So we need a separate foundation for <laughs> Kubernetes networking projects. <laughs> <laughs> okay, call for what? All right, that wraps us up for the day. Um, unless anybody else has things they want to be able to put on the uh, public recording for this. <laughs>